Welcome guys to another video! Today I'm going to be talking about the newly introduced mode for Dead by Daylight, what it is, how it works, what can you do in it, and what everyone thinks about it. I'm also going to be talking about what could have made this entire mode better, where I think DVD went wrong, what I think they could improve, and so on. Stop! Before we move forward, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and like this video. Let's get into it! So if you're here and you have no idea what Lights Out mode is, let me talk you through it. Dead by Daylight has introduced a new game modifier, which is a total separate queue from the regular game. As usual, choose to play with Survivor or Killer. What makes this mode so special? As the name gives away, everything is extremely dark. Everything is foggy. It's very hard to see. Everybody is very, very scared. In theory, everything sounds perfect. But if you're going to listen a little bit longer, you're going to also see that, <laughs> see, it's exactly what Dead by Daily needs to spice things up. So let me tell you more about it. In this mode, the loadout button is completely blocked. That means that any side, both killers and survivors, are not allowed to bring in perks, items, add-ons, or offerings. In addition to that, killers do not have terror radius, meaning that can sneak up on anyone and every single killer in the roster became a stealth killer. On the survivor side, survivors do not leave scratch marks behind them when they're running now. This is pretty much everything that Lights Out is. It's a super limited time modifier. It's only going to be in the game for seven days. That means that on the 14th of February, it's going to expire. So make sure that you're going to go check it out as soon as possible. The modifier is also accompanied by a tome. It's a tome that rewards players with banners and profile pictures if they're going to successfully complete the challenges. The modifier also only features four of the maps uh, that we are all know and love. And that is Larry's Memorial Institute, the Yamoka Estate, Mount Orman Resort, and the Shattered Square. So where did it all go wrong, you may be asking? Let me tell you how my first game went. We spawned in on Yamoka Estate against the plague. We could see the auras of the fountains. After a while, we see Jill getting into a chase and shortly after she gets hooked. Someone tries to go to her rescue, unhooks her. The plague goes back on Jill. You understand where I'm going with this. Everybody was trying to take some hits for Jill and try to take the chase, taking the aggro, whatever you want to call it. In the end, everybody was slugged and Jill died at five jumps. So yeah. And this wasn't the only instance when that happened. Uh, most of the games are like that with killers that were just tunneling or camping or slugging even. And we thought it's just not the kind of experience that we were expecting. Even though my experience was one mostly negative, I'm going to try and be as objective as possible. I want this video to serve Dead by Daylight as a constructive criticism video. I don't want this to be me blaming Dead by Daylight or me praising Dead by Daylight for this mode because I'm not going to do either. So if you're looking for any sort of content like that, this is not the right place. Uh, I'm going to try and be, as I said, as neutral as possible because I really, really want to like lay it out as it is and as I have experienced it and as I've seen others experience it as well. We're going to start with the basics. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the Dead by Daylight forums which is like basically their official place where they're interacting and answering questions from members of the community. However, someone has asked if in the lights out mode, MMR is present, do we have DC penalties still enabled, yada yada. Dead by Daylight replied that yes, the uh, MMR or SBMM, the skill-based matchmaking system, is still enabled. So that means they are going to be matched according to the SBMM. However, you're not going to be able to gain or to lose SBMM slash MMR. However, keeping that in mind, DC penalties are still enabled, meaning that you cannot disconnect. You're still going to get a penalty for the mode. That's not going to be transferred into the regular game. I think this is their biggest mistake. I don't see how MMR has anything to do with the modifier. I don't see why they chose to let MMR still be uh, present in these type of matches. I think it would have been like much more fun. For future reference, I think that by daylight should completely let go of the MMR being implemented in this sort of modifiers moving forward. It, it would be just so much better. Now I'm going to also talk about the main event of the night and that is the fact that everybody is screaming how this is such a killer sided event survivor sided event. I'm gonna try and show you the realities of both sides. As a survivor, the only thing to your aid is the fact that you don't leave scratch marks when you're running. However, your footsteps are still pretty loud, uh, your breathing is still very loud, it's just like not very difficult for you to get tracked. One of the not so great things about playing survivor in this mode is the fact that you have nothing to fight 
tunneling or slugging with. So it means that you don't have any sort of second chance perks. If you're getting tunneled, you don't have any perks that are going to help you to pick yourself up or pick your teammates up from the ground if you're getting slugged. So I think the main issue with this is the fact that survivors are completely stripped from any single tool that they could have to, to fight back. The only thing that they still have is the pallets, which because of the very low visibility, it's very, very difficult for anyone to coordinate on the map, let alone try to find someone else. The pressure of the chase is enough, but also the pressure that you can't see anything and you can't tell, like you can't see anything and you can't tell like which way to go. Is this a wall? Is this a pallet? Nobody knows. So it's a lot of confusion. It's a lot of frustration. It's a lot of just, it's a lot that could just be avoided by giving survivors something to fight with. On the killer side, I do understand that it's extremely difficult to find survivors. I know how many many killers are struggling with tracking or with keeping chase up and that's like a reality and it, it, all of these are valid i totally understand that and i understand why most of the killers are prone to slugging or tunneling because sometimes these are the only survivors that you find and that's perfectly fine it's just that <sighs> it gets a lot and it gets frustrating and people just don't want to be part of this anymore I really hope that this uh, this game modifier is a stepping stone, a test uh, that Dead by Daylight is uh, is trying out right now to to see how things are going to go with separate queue times and with uh, separate modifiers. I honestly think it's a it's a great idea. It's a brilliant idea, and I'm glad that DBD finally, after eight years, are shaking things up. Why do I think there's so much negative feedback around it? Is because the game is about to celebrate its eighth year on the market. I understand that it's a game that keeps on developing. It's a game that keeps on growing and getting updates. However, receiving a, a different game mode after almost eight years and it being this, where so many things have been like overlooked and haven't been considered, is just disappointing on both sides. Because I really don't think that anyone is experiencing right now what the developers have planned for us with this mode. So bottom line, what I would change, I would make it so that MMR has absolutely no influence in how matchmaking is made in this separate, completely separate game mode. I would also make it so that DC penalties are just not a thing anymore. I, I think it would give any player the freedom and the idea that they can anytime just leave a game that is not going as they expected. I would try to find a middle way where survivors could have something on their side to, to fight back because being stripped down from every single thing that they could have fighting back like items and perks, only having no scratch marks and very limited visibility is just leading to a lot of resentment for this mode. For example, like what I thought of, make it so that there's one a one-time use per match for every Every survivor decisive strike for example i don't think anyone can argue that decisive is like so op and is making like such a, a terrible change i think that right now having that in a in a mode like this would actually be justified or in order to fight slugging how about two random players two random survivors have attributed unbreakable once per match nobody knows who has it you just have to be slugged or you have to like fully recover in order to find out. For the killer side, I think it's very important for everybody to remember what this mode is supposed to achieve. Everything is supposed to be casual. Everything is supposed to be fun. We're supposed to try and like scare each other, which has happened to me quite a few times. I mean, an, an entire like huge nemesis just managed to scare the crap out of me with this mode. And that's fun and that's exciting. And that's exactly what this mode is supposed to achieve. So keep in mind that it's not about winning. It's not about, you know, getting the 4K all the time. This is a mode where everybody's supposed to just take a step back from the entire dread that some of the Dead by Daylight matches have uh, have come to be right now. To tap a little bit into my own personal feedback, I'm going to be a little bit acid here. And I'm going to say that I feel like this mode could have been so much better if they could have prepared a little bit longer. Because from where I'm standing, and I've said this for the record before on my stream, I think that they rushed this mode to be accompanied by the Alan Wake chapter. To me, it seems like Dead by Daylight try to be a jack of all trades, make it a little bit like Alan Wake, but not too much, but also make it different. So it's 
a brand new mode. I think I would have preferred if they would just have released this with Alan Wake and being specific for Alan Wake. Like I've seen so many suggestions about how flashlights should have been maybe unlimited, like being unable to blind, but like being unlimited uh, batteries so you could see ahead of you. So you could use it as a tool to navigate the thick fog. Instead, you get no items. So it doesn't scream Alan Wake to me enough if we're going to take that route. But it's also not like a completely different, has nothing to do with any chapter sort of mode. Which again, as I said, is disappointing because we are on year eight of Dead by Daylight being in and year God knows what of players asking for new modes. And there have been tons and tons and tons of suggestions. It tried to be both something new, but also Alan Wake. And it kind of like fell in the middle and just it is what we have right now that's where i'm standing on that i'm so sorry if this upsets anyone it's just how i feel but yeah i'm glad that finally dead by daylight is starting to open up to new experiences it's finally trying to spice things up and it's experiencing with different approaches and is bringing new things to its players it just seems too little too late but I really hope that they're going to be uh, embracing the criticism, leaving like the negative feelings aside. Uh, and they're going to be using this in a constructive manner so they can bring us like even better modes in the future. If you have any thoughts on this, let me know how do you find lights out and what you would change uh, to make it better for both sides. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Mm -hmm.